Welcome to the Red Bee TV preview show, supported by A Star Recruitment for the 2022 season. As we look ahead to the same trip to the south of France this weekend to face the Catalan Dragons in Perpignan in the Betfred Challenge Cup quarter final. Kev, if we entered at round six and, and got the best draw we possibly could to face Whitehaven, then this week we've got possibly the toughest draw that we could have asked for. Yeah, it's definitely not one that you'd have uh, you'd have chosen. I think it'd have been your last choice. I think you'd have even rather gone away to to some of the, the bigger teams still left in. Uh, but in this country, I think the travel obviously plays a big part. Uh, the fact that Catalan are so tough to play at their place as well. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a tough one this week. Is it is it justifiable to say now that for Saints? Catalan away is now Saints' toughest fixture on the calendar each year. Um, it seems to be, yeah. It seems it seems to have become that. I think I don't think that's just necessarily a Saints thing, but yeah, it's that's it. I, I don't know if we've quite got the balance right. I know Saints are travelling over um, the day before. I think that's mainly to do with the kickoff time rather than anything else. Um, but we've kind of not got the right balance there yet, I don't think, and, and kind of come to terms. Yeah, we've won over there. I've seen us win over there a couple of times. I've seen us get absolutely banjoed over there a couple of times. Um, so, yeah, it, it's as I say, it's not it's not a tie you pick, and I think it is one of Saints' toughest that, that, that we have all season round. Yeah, and listen, I think this probably goes back to the grand final last season when we played Catalan. Um, and we spoke on that show say, saying basically that it was a 50-50 game and I don't think anything has really changed. Um, does the game at the start of the year mean anything? Does it show anything or is that opening night nerves maybe and this one's going to be a lot closer? Um, I think it probably shows more to Catalan than it does to us. Um, it shows to Catalan that they shouldn't go out and try and push us um, in the way they did in that first 20 minutes and and try the rough house tactics that you think, yeah, we're going to knock them off the stride because we didn't rise to that. And I'd hope that we'd do it again. If it was me, I'd be saying to, to the lads that you can kind of expect that. It's tailor-made for that, that type of game because it's a one-off knockout, uh, knockout game. Um, so I think if we can keep our heads and, and kind of cut out any errors, make sure that there is a minimum, we have still got every chance over there. Squads then, Kev? Yeah. Um, changes, there's three to look at. Um, in Matty Lees comes back in, Will Hopoati comes back in, and James Bell comes back in, all returning from injury. Uh Wingfield, Sim and Amor, the three to drop out. I think with regards to the ones who drop out, I know um, Amor was overlooked last week and Sim was. And it, and he played in the in the reserves the day after uh, the Leeds game. And it might just be that they're trying to get him a little bit of game time and a little bit of match sharpness. It might just be that John Benison's kind of overtaken him in the uh, in training. But it's interesting to, to kind of see him being left at home when... You have got a, a couple, well, you've got Ben Davis there and James Bell who haven't made an appearance this season, but Ben Davis has been in, I think, every single 21-man squad. Yeah, who, who would be the, the for that miss out for you there? For me, you're probably looking at John Benison, Sam yeah. Royal, Ben yeah. Davis, and I think yeah. James Bell as well. I know he's in the squad and, he, and it's been talked about, but is it a risk bringing him in for this? Uh, it possibly is, yeah. Um, but then again, it wouldn't surprise me to to see um, to see us kind of maybe rest somebody like Louis, um, and a kind of I don't know, make him play down the make James Bell play down the middle, maybe put Morgan Knowles in in. Um, in the middle as well, rather than playing 13, he might prop for a bit. Might be a bit risky with Matty Lees and Alex Wormsley coming back, because if you lose one of them, it's going to be a long afternoon, isn't it? 
Um, your first two choice props, we we've done okay without him. Not when we when we went over to to lose, um, but we've done all right in other games without him. And I, I do think it might be a bit of a risk um, putting James Bell in, even though he has been mentioned uh, in passing by by uh, Christian Wolf. Does it now say a lot for Dan Norman's performances that he's found himself overtaking uh, Kyle Amor in the 21-man squad? Is it just a, a rich reward for his performances over the last few weeks? Yeah, I think so. I think he, he's come on loops and bars. I think he, he made 105 metres from nine carries. I think I saw on the, the Super League website. Average gain of about 12 metres, which you can't ignore. Um, I, I thought he was good against Leeds. Um, and I think he needs that game time and he needs to go to places like Catalan and, and kind of show what he can do over there against a big nasty pack um, to show that he, he is going to overtake the likes of <coughs> Kyler Moore and then eventually the likes of Louis as well. Um, unfortunately, they're coming towards the end of the careers. Dan Norman should really just be starting his proper top flight career with us. Um, and I think that because we're not really kind of mentioning him not being in that 17-man squad. I think he will make it. I think that's just testament to him. The Catalan squad then, Kev? Yeah, Arthur Moore comes in for the first time since the grand final. I think it is. Um, He's a good player. I've mentioned him in the past. Um, He's a good player. Um, he can make things happen, whether it's it's almost like one of them games too early for him, um, where he, he might not get a, a big run out and he might be a little bit rusty. Um, but listen, they've they've got enough, haven't they? They, they, they didn't finish top last season by a fluke. Um, and it, it's, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough going over the... If they've got everybody back, I did Sam Cassiano miss last week as well, I think. Um, yeah, it's 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 going to be tough, and I know you, you've done your weather forecast um, in the in the past couple of weeks. We've just been chatting about it that the there's high winds um, forecast for, for Saturday, so we've got to hope that wind peters out and it doesn't become too much of a. Um, too much reliant. The game isn't reliant on on mistakes from that because we want to see good free flowing rugby. Yeah, we, we do. And is this a game that's going to be won in the forwards again, though? Yeah, probably. I mean, we've got obviously Alex and, and Matty coming back, and Matty's had a couple of weeks off with an ankle injury. Alex has had his his issues with his hamstring. Um, so and you'd you'd think that um, Alex was was ready to go last week, um, but but they've just kept him just because he maybe not quite ready, maybe too much of a risk. Um, so I don't think it's going to. I don't think them missing too long should affect them because they're usually good for doing big minutes. But if there's any slight risk with them, um, there's no reason why Catalan can't come out on top in the forwards, and that would make our task very very difficult obviously it, it's tough at the best of times over there but yeah with the cup draw only taking place Monday last week um or, the, or, or sorry on the Sunday but the the ties not being announced to like the Tuesday where they were going to be it's made uh, getting over there difficult for many and um, there's not many direct routes to, to Perpignan you know, from the northwest and I think probably the same to Toulouse as well and I think this was one of the biggest issues we've obviously the teams in the south of France. There's no real direct route to get in there. So um, fans who have got over, um, I, I know some went Wednesday via Birmingham and there's a few going there um, via Stansted on Saturday morning. Um, they're going to have to make the voices heard because they're going to be in the minority to say the least. Yeah, listen, they might be in the minority, but I'm sure that they, they'll get behind the fans like like the whole men's does. They'll make noise like, like the Westwood. It's 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 up to them to, to kind of make themselves heard, make sure the Saints fans know that Saints players, sorry, know that they're there. Um, I'm sure they will. They, we've seen a couple of um, couple of pictures of people out over there enjoying themselves. Um, as I say, 
weather forecast wise, I think the temperature drops off for weekend with a bit of wind. So, um, bit of wind. Anybody, yeah. Uh, why, why are you looking so worried, Dave? Like, I, I quite like flying, but you've just told me we're landing in 45 mile an hour winds in Perpignan. Listen, get on the plane, you're going to the perfect place. Pop a couple, pop a cork, get a glass of wine down your neck. Do you need me to get on the, the phone to the Pope or something to make sure that you land all right? Will you be all right? So, like, 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 like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just get, get yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get you a glass of milk before you get on there. But listen, yeah, the Saints fans who are being able to, to travel over there. Um, good on them for for making that that effort at such short notice. <laughs> it's it's the way the world games away in France are part of the league, part of the, part of the structure that we've got. Um, so it's it's great to know that Saints have got fans who who are able to, and not everybody is able to um, get over there. Whether it be circumstance, whether it be not currently having a passport. Well, it'd be. How are you allowed? How are you allowed back into Saint Helens when you're not the border? Because, because, because I'm, because I'm from Saint Helens. That's why. And listen, I, I don't think nobody could blame anybody for not travelling this weekend. It's just yeah. it's that it feels like I think our travel plans: um, eight o'clock train from Warrington on Friday night down to Stansted. Gets to Stansted just after midnight. Sleep on an airport floor till check in at four o'clock in the morning. Fly at six, um, or the games on BBC One at half past two. Yeah. Uh, and listen, annual leave cost cost of living's gone up. It, it all comes into it. And listen, I think this is the only one um, out of the French games this season I'm going to be able to get to over there. Um, and it, partly because we've managed to get it pretty cheap in in the end. Going via Stansted, it was I think we only paid like forty quid for the flight to return. We got on it quite quickly. Um, and it's one of those I, I felt wanting to go because I didn't think the Saints were going to get much support over there in terms of in terms of numbers. Um, so if if I had the opportunity to go for Mitch, I'll take it with both hands. Um, yeah. And fingers crossed, we get the result. Yeah, absolutely. Um, fingers crossed, we do. That's it. As we say, the, the fans who've gone over there, good on them. I'm sure it'll be a a decent size, considering the the, um, the notice that that we got. Um, but yeah, hopefully we can get the results. Hopefully we can um, come away with the with our name in the hat. I nearly said the two points, but hopefully with our name in the hat. So hopefully we don't go to extra time or anything like that. We can just get it nicely sewn up early on. As you say, it's half two kick off over here uh, on BBC on the BBC. So. Plenty of fans are going to be able to watch it, um, and I'm sure, I'm sure, instant fan reaction will be interesting. Um, if you can get someone over there, I'm sure you'll find someone, won't you? Yeah, um, I'll get one of the main men. Um, and do you know what? It, it kicks off at half three over there, so we're an hour ahead. So I'll send you the first try scorer. Yeah, if you would please get one over on the bookies. Yeah. Um, do you know what? I was looking forward to the game, but. Uh, it was announced today that they're going to have a grilled snail barbecue in the stadium. And I think I'm looking forward to that even more. <laughs> what, a li- little bit of garlic butter on them? Yeah, stuff them with a bit of lard, a bit of salt, paprika. <laughs> it's, uh, it sounds like, you, yeah, it sounds like you've got them, got them all sorted there. Are you having yours well done? Are you having yours... Uh, medium are you... rare. Apparently, medium rare. Kev, I'm, I'm told that when they start to whistle, that's when, you know the, that's when you know they're cooked. And oh, some prefer them to have a little bit of drool or some prefer them a little bit drier. I'll try both and let you know what's best. Uh, they sound disgusting. I'm, I'm not... Uh, did, did you say you're to a, me... The, you're, not a, you're not a cultured man, are you, Kev? Yes, I am a cultured man, you cheeky. Um, high bar. <laughs> no, I, I just... I, it, They've got, them, they've got a mushroom. They've got a mushroomy taste. Apparently, I hate mushrooms. Cannot stand the things. They're evil, evil bits. There's nothing right with a mushroom. Um, I may, I may film my first taste of them just to uh, entertain you. Do it, do it. Well, I was That's shocked it. when it said uh, a normal portion is about a hundred snails. We'll get them down your neck then. Absolutely. 
Well, if and, you, and it's offensive if you drink them with water, I'm told. So you're going to have 100 snails washed down with a little bit of wine or a little bit of beer. Listen, live the dream. It's like a recipe waiting for disaster, isn't it? It really is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Instant fan reaction with Dave Huey and snails up. Yeah. We were just like, one that wasn't quite whistling, so it wasn't quite cooked still alive. Do, do, you to, do you want me to get in touch with Peter just in case me and him have to fill in on the. Uh... <laughs> well, yeah, do you know what? You, we, you think we're like, obviously, we're, we're, we're jesting, but do you know what? I am genuinely looking forward to trying one of the local delicacies because apparently it, from, the, from the Okate in Perpignan region. Um, it's one. It's one of their specialities. So do you know what? They normally have the first ones of the year around Easter Monday, so we're maybe a week early, so they'll be nice and fresh. Listen, good on you. I, I always listen. I'm, I'm one of the. I'm a, not a fussy eater. I'm like the least fussy fussy eater. I'll try everything, but I'm I'm I'm, I'm all right for trying snails. I'm all right for trying snails. Thanks. I have two hundred and eat for two. Yeah, that's all right. I'm just, I'm just glad, just glad you haven't broke out any of your corny jokes about uh, snails or anything like that. Like you usually start with your puns. No xenophobia on Red V. Good, good. It's usually your puns that you start doing. It's only when, it's only when players they've got people like uh, Harry Bones. Harry Bones. Harry Bones. Scored, yeah. scored against us last week in the academy. <laughs> <laughs> Wakefield beat us in the second half. And Harry Bones yeah. scored. Was it the reserves rather than the academy? I think it was the reserves. Yeah, it was one of the two. But yeah, it apparently was the star of the show. <laughs> oh, there we are. Could have said they, they threw a new star into the mix. We've been there, we've done them jokes. We can't. Yeah, we, you say we, you've done them jokes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right then, Kev, predictions. Um, take by 13. I'm going to go with... I'm on the fence. I'm generally on the fence. I think that it's a game that could go either way. Um, oh, so I will, I will take Saints by, Saints by anything. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just being Matt Lawrence. <laughs> Yeah. He always he always backs Liverpool to win, so I'm I'm being Mark Lawrence and, and I'm just backing Saints to win every single game and I'm backing us by 13. And I don't I think that'll be like not a, a an easy win. It'll be obviously we'll knock over me my thought process is we'll knock over a drop goal to try and make it like a two score game. Then hopefully if Catalan is trying to throw it about, we go in again. I'll go Saints by three. Three's a three's a weird one, but yeah, okay. Okay, we'll be winning by six. We'll kick the drop goal, go seven up, and they'll respond with a try in the corner, fail a con- uh, missed the conversion. Then they'll, Fair be, enough. then they'll be battering the line, trying to score a try, and Saints defence will hold out. We might as well not go over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm, I'm going in the back garden in a minute with my torch, going to have a little dig, get some snails out. <laughs> I don't I don't think you're meant to eat them on a slice of buttered Warburton's bread, though. Actually, do you know what? The price of gas to actually sizzle them, it'd probably be cheaper to go to Perpignan. Yeah, probably will the be. The only put their energy up about 4%. All right, yeah. 54% over here with the same company. Less, uh, yeah, well. I'm, less all, I'm, on one, I'm on one today. The less said, the better. We've been told off for tweeting about the win today. The, the Twitter police have been out and told us really how to run our Twitter accounts. I didn't um, tweet about the wind. Well, I did tweet about the wind. I tweeted about the recycling. Yeah. And the terrible yeah. bags in this town. Yeah. We don't have that problem over here in leafy Cheshire. No. We want bins. Do you know what? I should have stood in the upcoming local elections. That would have been my manifesto. Recycling bins for all. I'd have got that. I'd have, I'd have took the clean sweep. Recycling bins and and potholes filled, and you could have stood seen how oh, big no, potholes were. Been there, were. done that. Potholes were filled. Bin, bin there. There you go. Hey, Back again hey, with your pun. Hey, there we go. <laughs> if you want things doing, have a moan. 
<laughs> unless, unless it's about our Twitter account, then we just don't care. People, do you know what, right? Before we just finish here, people try to get onto us, try to politicise that afterwards. And I did actually try to say, do you know what? You can have a dig about recycling and the ludicrous bag situation without actually being against the politics of the town. Yeah. You're allowed to be critical of things that you don't like. Culture. But people can't really separate the two. But there we go. This has been a party political <laughs> broadcast on behalf of the Red V Party. I tell you what, Kev. That would have legs. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> you you could do a doc. I'd cover Fasso <laughs> We'll get Alf on board to cover all the rich areas like Windle. Yeah. We we'd be we'd be in. <laughs> Is this where you say don't forget to like, share, and subscribe when we start talking about politics? I'm going to stand in Newton just because I want to be the man there instead. What, you're just going to go and stand in the middle of Newton? I wouldn't. That's their candidates. I'd have a clean yeah. speech. Easy. Right, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And we'll catch you. Saturday? Yeah. In Perpignan? Catch you soon. Au revoir. If my plane doesn't crash. <laughs>